How you doing? Welcome back to my channel. RV Rookie here and today I have top 10 things that you need to know before you start full-time RVing. I had a uh, viewer of mine ask a few questions and I thought, you know, I've never really elaborated elaborated on the whole RV thing and it's coming up on about a year now for me almost a year ago today I uh, I saw Sunny and decided that that was the rig for me and I was fortunate enough to actually get that particular rig the exact rig that I wanted so I've almost got a year under my belt give it a few more months okay things you need to know a few moments later okay number one right now is not a good time to start definitely not a good time to start with covid and everything for some odd reason everyone in the united states of america decided they wanted an rv i even know up north they're on back order everybody wants rvs this trend it could be from youtube sorry i'm losing my paper it could be from youtube it could be from something else but everybody's buying an rv Plus, due to the COVID, a lot of plants were um, forced to shut down. So, they're not coming out. There's, there's a higher demand than there is supply at this point. I was lucky when I bought Sunny because it was like right before the pandemic hit. Just right before. I bought her at the right time. There's Sunny. Um, however, I think sometimes, and I'm not going to... I don't want to say anything bad about Forest River because I love them. However, I think sometimes the insides of them are made so mass produced that they're cheap. I mean, little things, not big things that matter, but like I have draws come out all the time. The little latches under my draws are broke. I had to, you know, repair that myself. There's just little things inside break. You know, you can just kind of tell they're a little teeny tiny cheap, which is fine. I guess. I told you that has to fix them. You don't know what you're, what you're doing. That's me. Number two. And that is no slam on Forest River, by the way. No slam. Number two, the weather conditions and driving. It can get crazy out there. Even driving a car. Just driving something bigger than you. And I'm talking to the brand newbies. I'm not talking to people that haul these huge travel trailers. Crap. Nah. It's early in the morning, y'all. Um, I'm not talking about the people who do these big travel trailers because they, you know, end up been doing them a few years. I'm talking about itty bitty me in a huge RV. To me, it's huge. Towing a car. Rain scares me. And then when I turn the windshield wipers on, of course, the dogs go nuts and I'll get to that. But it's not, it's not as easy as I thought it would be as far as bad weather. When the wind acts up and I'm towing and my car gets going and I'm trying to steady sunny, it is, <laughs> it's scary. It's honestly scary. It scares me a lot, a lot. <laughs> Moving on, number three, traveling with dogs. <laughs> this one, I'm just gonna start by saying, make sure your dogs like to travel. Make sure that they enjoy car rides. Make sure that they're down with what you're doing because I thought mine were, well one is, but the other one, she's just, she's not digging it. She's not digging it at all. I feel terrible. I'm lucky that I got some calm down stuff from the vet for her, but she's made this trip a little more, say difficult than I really wanted it to be. I really didn't want it to be this hard. And that's another thing. It looks good on YouTube. You see these girls in their sun hats and their little vans and their sundresses and it's like, oh, that looks great, right? That's smoke and mirrors, my friends. Fancy cameras, GoPros. <laughs> that's smoke and mirrors. I guarantee it because there's so much more struggle than what people really tell you. And it all depends on how you handle it. I've taken mine in stride. I'm, I'm cool with it, but I don't know. <laughs> Number four, 
gas prices. Right now, I'm not having a real rough time because gas is at a very, very, very good price. However, come January, the gas prices are gonna go through the roof. Trust me, through the roof. It's gonna be four or five dollars a gallon. I guarantee it, mark my word, come back in a few months and... So, that's gonna be a problem that I'm going to have to cross that bridge when I come to it. But just know, these things take a lot of, our, or a lot of gas. And I know that when I'm towing, Sunny sucks it down faster than... Sunny's an MMIRV, for those of you that are new. Um, Sunny sucks a lot of gas, especially with the tow car. And then just think, when they raise it, come January, ooh. So, that's another reason I kind of like to stay put, because I know that things are going to happen in this world that are out of my control, that I'm going to have to be in a safe something, something. Number five. Yeah, I have notes, y'all. Number five, plan on what kind of camper you want to be. Um, I thought I was going to be a boondocker when I started. I honestly did. I bought all this solar stuff and all this stuff that I, I used my solar once and that's when the, um, I'm losing stuff over here. It's getting windy. Uh, I lost power one time and I did use my solar one time. But at first I thought I was going to be a boondock camper and y'all know on one of my first couple of videos I already told you my boondocking experience and how it was just it's I'm not a boondocker I'm not so decide on what kind of camper you want to be it turns out I'm an RV park girl or I'm a state park girl <laughs> I love electric y'all what do you what do you want me to say I'm so on to my electric number six have something for some kind of means of income before you start. Don't go out there. Mistake already made. Unless you have a lot of friends and a lot of subscribers, it's not a good idea to rely on YouTube for your first year at all. That's why I ended up waitressing. That's why I'm still looking for a serving position when I move to my next location. It's hard. It is hard. And to make quality videos like I want to and have the time and energy to put into them that I want to, it's hard because I'm trying to work on the side and travel and do all kinds of stuff. So it's very time consuming. And uh, my videos end up looking like this. <laughs> so definitely have a job or a remote job or some kind of income, disability, whatever you do. Number seven. Cost of RV parks, they are a little high. Um, you can get some good ones in Texas for around four to five hundred, I believe. You can get some good ones in South Carolina. I had one in South Carolina that was around four twenty, four twenty, <laughs> and that place was good. It was safe. The people were nice. Um, you come down to Florida, uh uh, uh uh, they're over a grand, well, well over a grand. I have tried, I wanted to go back to the Sarasota area. So high priced. Um, I wanted to try St. Augustine because that's the most beautiful part of Florida in my eyes. And it's just, not only that, they're packed. You also have to think with the RV parks, there, there's a mass exodus right now from California, New York, probably Michigan soon. People are leaving these areas they're leaving and they're coming to Florida and they're coming to Texas and they're coming to Arizona. So with that being said, RV, RV parks are few and far between. I don't even know if I'm in my next one yet. I don't even know. I don't know. When I called last week they had openings, that could change overnight. So definitely watch if you're going to be an RV parker like I am. I'm not a boondocker. So if you're going to do RV parks, plan on having that extra income. Definitely. Towing. Number seven, towing. I didn't really plan on towing, to be honest with y'all. I thought that I could actually go out there and make it with a scooter. <laughs> and I found out I was wrong. 
In fact, the first place that I stayed long term, I had Miss Joanne. Hi, Miss Joanne. Thank you for watching my videos. Um, Miss Joanne took me to Walmart because I didn't have a car, you know, and it was so far away. So I definitely figured out that I needed a car and that I needed to tow more expense, more hassle. And like I said, when I started this journey, I didn't plan on it. So when you're towing a car, just be ready that everything's going to up in price. Everything's going to be, and it's not also driving wise, it's not like, um, like I just drove Sunny up north and it was great. I had my little RV, yada, yada. You know, I didn't like the mountain roads, but I made it through, it was fine. Now I got a car in the back changing lanes, everything becomes 100% different. Like I said before, the wind, it all becomes just a whole new ball game, really. I mean, whole new ball game. <laughs> Number eight, yes, I am reading. Ugh. So there's no awkward pauses, y'all. People in the parks. I have never, since I've been here, um, not since I've been here, but in the South, I've never run into anything weird or um, rude. In fact, Florida RV parks are my favorite, reason being they're, so they're very nice. South Carolina was very nice. Um, Alabama, they were so sweet. Illinois actually though, it was such the tip of Southern Illinois that I was in that they were actually really cool too. But up north, some people in the parks are iffy. It seems like you get a lot of your bad campers up there because they're only doing it for the weekend and then you get your partiers and your slow down gangs and your drunks and yeah. So the further south you head, the nicer the people get. So that's good. Just watch out for people in the parks. Like I said, up north I had a stalker, the Harley freak. Just be careful. I mean, if you're, and I'm speaking to other people like me. I'm not speaking to big burly guys here. Hi though. Uh, <laughs> I'm speaking to other solo females that want to try to do this. Especially other solo females with dogs. Because it makes a big difference with dogs. <laughs> so just... I always try to stay in Good Sam parks. I'm a Good Sam's member. And uh, I've never found a bad Good Sam park. So that's kind of where I kind of tend to be. Because I'm solo and for safety. And that's probably why it costs me more, because I do go to these bigger, nicer parks for my own safety. I don't want to go boondock alone in the woods. I just don't. <laughs> it's just, I don't. Can't do it. Can't do it. Call me chicken. That's fine. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Number 10. It is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of work. I knew that coming into it. <clears throat> But then I didn't. <laughs> um, I am not one that will go park in a campground. And I mean, I'll hook up my hoses, but I don't leave my tanks open. Because, you know, if you ever heard of those poop pyramids in your black tank, <laughs> it's where the water swishes by everything else. And then you get like a buildup in your room, your tank, that's all crazy. No, so I am one of those that goes out every few days and empties my tanks. It's work. A lot of work. Um, I'm constantly doing little repairs here and there, fixing leaks, fixing this, fixing that. And believe you me, I'm not handy. I just opened the door the other day and my screen came out. And I guess I'll have to wait till I get to Jacksonville to find some mail to do it. No, <laughs> but seriously, like like I said, they're they're made cheap inside, and I I don't want to slam for a server, but they're kind of cheap inside. So, like I said, drawers to fix and. And then I, my awning, and that was probably my fault because I couldn't get it in that one time. It's got a big tear in it now that I've got to fix, which I had to get on the roof. And I don't like getting on the roof because it's, I don't know, it gives me the boo-boo jeebies. So, <laughs> got to fix the roof. But just be ready for all kinds of little tiny repairs. And I was glad that I researched this before I did it a little bit. And I did buy a box of fuses. I have them in there. I do have a tiny toolbox in there. And then I will pick up tools every now and then wherever I go, whatever I need, and keep them. So that helps a lot too. There's a lot of stuff to think about before you get into this lifestyle. Definitely don't just jump into it. Watch YouTube videos. Don't buy an RV right now, starting out. Wait a few months. Um, 
the videos, watch videos on YouTube, read books, anything that you have to do to gain knowledge. And uh, I do have a viewer that wanted to get a hold of me, and I'm still trying to figure out a way to get a hold of you. I just didn't want to put my email up there because it's it's public, <laughs> and I didn't want to get spammed or doxed or anything. Um, but I will figure out a way to talk to you. And if you have any questions, feel free to write it in the comment section, and I will definitely answer it on video or in the comment section. So I hope that helps some of you thinking about maybe wanting to do this. Just, and I'm not saying it's not fun. It's, it's a great lifestyle. I love it because I can get up and go. But there's just so much more to it that some of us don't think about. And I'm not saying that I wouldn't be doing it had I thought of that stuff before or had I known that stuff before. I'm not saying I would not have been doing it. But I think I would have definitely done it at a different time. Definitely. Do I have regrets? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I love this lifestyle. Absolutely love it. But a lot comes with it. That's the price we pay <laughs> to the RV gods. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, thumbs up. Please subscribe. And remember, you too can find your road.